Tis the season to be smoochy. Welcome to another episode of Smoochy Town. My name's Marco. Obviously, I'm the goddamn host. And before we get to our very, very special and talented guest, it's the Smoochy of the Week, guys. And this one was a creative one, okay? And you guessed it. I was on Raya again, swiping like a machine gun, Kelly. And some girl slid into my messages saying, hey, H-E-Y-O lowercase, power move. I liked it. But I was like, you can't be hot. Hot girls don't do that. Hot girls don't slide in your messages. So I was like, hey, what up? And then she was like, follow me on IG. I was like, okay, weird flexi. So I went to Instagram and I followed her, of course, because she was a smoky. And then she messaged me, do you want to grab a bite to eat and live stream it? And I was like, oh, okay. I like where this is going. What do you want me to take a bite out of? Uh... It wasn't her. Uh, so I met her at a restaurant in Sherman Oaks called Thai Show, which overpriced, don't recommend. Uh, shout out Thai, right? My guest doesn't like it. My guest doesn't like it. You're about to see him soon. Um, and then she meets me there and she's in the workout clothes. And I was like, okay, uh, it's a little weird. And we sat down. She has the camera on the selfie stick like an Asian on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, we started chit-chatting it up. And then she takes her sweatshirt off and goes, I apologize for the stench. If it's a little too encompassing, I can put my sweatshirt back on. And I was like, did you not shower before this date? And she didn't look like her photos, but she was an OnlyFans girl. So maybe I was going to get that bite later evening. So I put up with the stench and it smelled like an LA fitness men's locker room. Did not like you. And then she tried to order the sea bass, the freaking prime rib. I don't know why a sushi restaurant has those items. And I shut that down. I was like, you are getting apps only and no drinks. I was drinking heavily to put up with her. Uh, live stream the whole thing. And then uh, she was like, do you want to rub my feet later? And I was like, absolutely not. So end of the day, end of the night, no smoochy town for that girl. Shout out her. All right. Coming in hot, coming in hot. He's an actor, he's a musician, a good friend of mine, and he just celebrated his birthday. Everybody is Jack Griffo! Thanks, guys. Hey, what's up, buddy? Thanks for having me, Marco. What'd you think of that smooch of the week? Dude, that was iconic, dude. That's I, crazy. I, I had a similar thing happen, bro. You had I, a live stream smooch? Actually, you dude, she tried. She tried. So I, I, I matched with this girl also on Raya. Shout out, Raya. <laughs> um, and she was so hot. Like, one of the hottest girls I've ever seen. One yeah. of those girls where you're like, whoa. Yeah. This girl has it all going on. I'll risk on. it all. And so I'll risk it all. Exactly. And so we're talking and uh, uh, she's she's really hard to lock down. You know, I'm trying to get her on a date, whatever. Finally, she's she's down to like, go on a date. Mm -hmm. And when he said this, it just reminded me of it because it's so funny. This first time this ever happened to me. And we get like a, a date. We get like a, a time and a place. And I'm like, cool, ready to go. And like literally an hour before she's like, oh, yeah. Like, do you mind if I live stream the whole thing? I was like, absolutely not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> I think I think they probably do it one for you when you're a huge star because they'll probably get more viewers having you on the live stream. For me, maybe she just tried to make fun of me and mock me by not showering before the date because I'm on Fuckboy Island and like <laughs> put it to the man. You know? I admire you for being so ballsy. Like right when she said that, I was like, oh no, like no, definitely not. Oh really? I, I'm, I'm just, I, I just wasn't down. Yeah. yeah it was a hard pass for Because it was like, I couldn't even be myself really. And I, I could tell that she was like kind of fucking with me. But dating yeah. in LA sucks. Am I? Oh, yeah. I was dating for it's you. Tough. Besides, just, it's hard. I mean, I've been single for two years and it's tough to find people out here that are kind of like uh, aligned to your your path. You know what I mean? Do you try to date in the industry or out? Because people understand <laughs> exactly. your lifestyle and yes. you know, getting stopped in the street, whatnot. I was just talking about this with one of my one of my buddies. Uh, I've dated girls that are actresses as well. And I've dated girls outside of the industry. And there's like pros and cons because the girls that are actresses know your lifestyle, know the work, know that you might be kissing on some other girls. And like, that's a big thing, you mm. know. And, um, and the girls that aren't in the industry are like way less... Uh, maintenance, you know what I mean? Like, like it's easier, but they also don't understand as much. Like yeah. when you have like a kissing scene, you have to like tell them and they want to know all the details and it's like, oh my It's God. a little annoying. Yeah, and like uh, girls that are actresses know it's just part of the job and it's not sexy. Like when you're having like a sex scene or like uh, yeah. even just kissing. Have you like, had a sex scene? Yeah. 
Ooh. And it's not sexy at all. It's like like 15 people in the room watching and there's like an intimacy coordinator and like, you know, it's yeah. all very it's all very rigid and you have to make it feel like it's not. Yeah. Hence the acting. But uh, can you find this on Pornhub? Um, it should be on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah last I checked. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, bro. Well, congratulations, first and foremost, on Thunderman's movie coming out. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, so that was your first big role. The TV show on Nick, right? Yeah, that's right. One that's of the right. longest running. Yeah, it was pretty long. It was like it's like the third most episodes in in Nick history, under under like iCarly and Henry Danger, I think. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, it was the best time of my life. I, I still I, I love the Thundermans. I'm so grateful for Nickelodeon for everything that they've they've done for me. And we we filmed the movie back in April, and I just had a meeting this morning on Zoom about kind of the marketing, and getting things going for next year. It's really exciting. It's gonna be that'd be tight. Yeah, that'd be and really. You just cool. went to Brazil. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I saw on your story it was at Comic Con. Um, yeah, it was I was a big at a Q and A. It was like insane. How many we people did, were there? We did like three three segments there um, at Comic Con there, and we went like ten years ago when the show came out. Me and Kira, my co star, mm -hmm. and it was crazy then. Like the fandom down there is just nuts. Like they they go insane for for shows and music and everything. And so now it's been ten years. The show's been out. Me and Kira are you know much older, and we've been in the spotlight for longer. And so we get there. And I mean, bro, like I felt like the Beatles, like really? it, it was like paparazzi fans at the hotel, at the airport, like shoving like pictures in my face to sign. I'm like, like flashing lights. I'm like, you yeah. know, with sunglasses on. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. cool. It was up. cool. And it's not like that for me anywhere else in the world. So I, I soaked it up. bro. Yeah. I was like, this is awesome. What do you mean <laughs> like, like that for you? It's just not, you know, I, I'm like uber famous there. And like, I'll get stopped in the street sometimes here, but it's not like that. You know yeah. what I mean? It was, it was pretty neat. It was yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. Do you have any crazy stories of how uh, your fame has maybe helped you in yes. getting out of something? Yes. Yeah? Yes. I love this story. I tell this story to my friends a lot. It's a great story. So I was maybe 18 years old and I was leaving Paramount um, and I... Um, I was going down uh, Gower, or going up Gower rather, towards the 101, mm -hmm. and I had my lights off on my Jeep. And um, I might have smoked a little something, uh, like oh. maybe like 20 minutes prior. Hello. I wasn't like like really like messed up or anything, but like I might have smoked a little something, and I was tripping, bro, because I got pulled over by a cop. Ooh. Got pulled over by the cop. That'll sober you up real quick. Oh my gosh, I was so tripping, man. And he gives me the whole cop like hard rundown. He's like. You know, have you been drinking tonight? Like, you know, giving me like the works, you know, I'm freaking out. Yeah. And I'm like, I have my lights off and I'm like, damn, I've done this before. I didn't turn my lights on, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking I'm screwed. I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to I'm going to get a DUI. It's the end of my career. I saw the headline on TMZ, like Nickelodeon star, you know. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And. And I knew you always hear that like cops like dig actors. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you know that's like the thing in Hollywood, right? Yeah. And I've never pulled this card, never pulled it since, but I had to. It was like the one time that I needed to go for it. Yeah. So I'm freaking out and I'm like, oh, officer, like I'm so sorry. I I had the longest day. I was I was shooting my show at Paramount. Oh, you dropped a little Paramount. I, dro I dropped it. You gotta I, drop it. I dropped it. And um, I was like, oh, I was just so tired. We, we worked really late today, got up early, and I just I forgot to turn my lights on. I'm so sorry, officer. Yeah. And he looks at me, he looks me up and down. He's like, uh, what, uh, what's, what show are you on? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got this guy. I'm like, oh, um, I don't know if you know, but uh, it's like a kid show. It's on Nickelodeon. It's called, it's called The Thundermans. Yeah. And he looks at me, wide-eyed. Guy starts blushing, bro. And I knew I was out of it like immediately. Yeah. He like calls his partner over. He's like, hey, get over here, bro. This this kid, I know this kid. This is the guy. This is the guy. This is the guy. He's like, his kids love it. You know, he's he's taking pictures with me. I took a picture with them. I'm off free, dude. No, really? Yeah. Slap on the wrist. Let's go. Yeah. And you're originally from Orlando, Florida. That's right. How has that really shaped you, would you say? Uh, I love It's loved, a different lifestyle. I loved growing up in Orlando. I mean, anywhere else but but LA and New York, I mean, we're in such a bubble, you know, the rest of the country is so different. Mm -hmm. But growing up in Orlando is a big city. There was a lot of opportunity for young artists. You know, I was really into community theater. My older brothers uh, went to a big theater magnet program in high school. And I was like 10 at the time. And so, you know, instead of going to like football games and basketball games, which I still do sometimes, I loved going to watch my older brothers in like Oklahoma, you know, in Greece and like watching them oh, do, really? do stage. What's your favorite musical? Um... Maybe Dear Evan Hansen. 
Ooh, yeah, okay. it's such a good What's one. It's a, it's a newer one, um, it's a newer but one. you know, I love Wicked. I just saw, um, I just saw Music Man, and that was one of the first shows that I did back in Orlando at my school when I was a kid. Um, I was actually in New York um, at the callbacks for the new Back to the Future musical. Ooh. And I almost got that, and that was like Yo, such. That's what I remember. You were, where you hung out like this is before I even went on F Boy Island. You mentioned that uh, we were hanging out, and you like I just came or from the musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a. I, I was in New York, and I went to the theater that I would have been in if I got the part. And Hugh Jackman was playing the Music Man, and it was so good. I love Hugh Jackman. Oh, Everything wow. he does is amazing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm a theater kid. Like I just love performing, man. You know, I just want to entertain people in any way, even if it means like even if I don't make it big and acting whatever someday. Like I would like do hosting. Like I just I love entertaining yeah, people you talk and making well. people happy you, and smile and laugh. You're so. Very articulate. Would you ever try stand up? I would. I have stand up bits in my phone. Do it's you really? I definitely have aspirations for sure. Um, I met a, a gentleman who owns, not owns, but I think he runs the comedy store. Polly Shore. And I forget his name. Polly Shore? Polly Shore. Polly Shore. Polly Shore. Polly Shore. It wasn't Polly Shore. It was a guy. Um, I got connected to him through like a friend who was doing stand up, and I told. I think it is Richie. Yeah, I think it might be Richie. Richie. I, oh, I really? think it is Richie. Honestly. Oh, yeah, so I just heard that name get tossed around for something. But and yeah. I and I was hanging out with him, and I was like, "Hey, man, like, would you ever let me like come up and like do a few minutes?" And I, I've always kind of wanted to. And he's like, "Dude, anytime. Like, anytime. You got oh, five that's minutes. Huge. Five How minutes many stores the Mecca in LA? I know. And so well, I feel like when maybe, maybe next year, when everything kind of like I have so much going on all the time, and I want to do so much shit. Like it. it I, I've struggled with this my whole life, like having my my interests in so many places, and it's hard. You kind of have to like really narrow your focus. Kind of like when you're at a party and mm. there's girls, and you have to like zero in on one. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you yeah, you have and to. And I never do. Yeah, I never do either. I always make the mistake. I talk to all of them, and then it's the end of the night, and I don't I don't get no. Any of them. I get too <laughs> drunk. I just want to play beer pong with the boys. And then at the end of the night, I just have my dick in my hands <laughs> dude, because I, I always get up going home alone instead of like focusing on like talking to a girl. Yeah, dude, at my birthday party the other night. There's uh, a we, lot of girls there. There was a lot of hot girls and my, I was playing ping pong for like way too long at a certain time. I know. I, I, I ran went there. I went there. You're like, hey. Let me finish this game. It's I'm in a 50. duel. I'm in a duel right now. <laughs> but uh, I played. I, I won like five in a row. It was awesome. Oh, you're on a heater. Speaking of, dude, last night I went out with a girl and we. I took her to pins. Great date spot. Five strikes in a row. Gobble, Dude, gobble, I, I, gobble, I, I, gobble, I, gobble. I felt like the man, bro. Let's she was go. like, okay, okay. And I told her, I was like, I'm not that good. Did you, you know, knock like, any whatever. pins down later? Um, maybe one or two. Oh, you yeah. brought her a smoochie not, not strike. I didn't strike. I didn't no strike, strike but yeah. you brought her a smoochie <laughs> Yeah. All right, you got a little smear action. Yeah. Pins is great. But they just fucking revamped or something. It's so expensive for like no reason. They too. did it's a bowling alley. Dude, I thought the same thing last night. I, I, I go and it's the two of us and we do two games, like 60 bucks. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I yeah. was expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> but bowling's fun because you get to like see their butt when they bowl on the way out. It's a good like. <laughs> probably the biggest pro. Teamwork. Oh, you know what I did too? Ultra pro move. I got us gingerbread houses. And so we Wait, went. What? We went home and made gingerbread houses. Oh, I thought you brought them to the bowling alley. Heck, <laughs> you imagine? B Y L G. <laughs> that's but, funny. Uh, that's yeah. cute. It was really cute. Yeah. What, well, how, where'd you find this one? Uh, I think on Blush or Raya, and I took her out to coffee like a few days ago, and we had. Bro, a great... the bl were you at the Blush event, dude? I've heard about these Blush events. I I wasn't, but There's... funny funny story. I was in Vegas a couple, maybe oh, right before our tour, and we. Um, we, I went to Vegas with a friend and I invited a, a girl, a local girl out that I, I think I met on Rye or something like that. And um, he invited a friend that he knew out that lived in LA, but was um, in Vegas. And so we kind of went on a little double date and we ended up doing the flip flop. You know what I'm saying? Like where you have like your girl, but you end up vibing with the other girl. Like both of us vibe with our other people. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really fun. And so and then you all just had an orgy? Yeah, exactly. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that cool. I'm not that cool, Margo. Um, but uh, this girl that I was hanging out with um, told me about Blush. Ironically, we're like hanging out. And she's yeah. like, you should get on this dating app. You know, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool, 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 cool. I you're, that was so you're, guys cool. It. you're cool. You're um, cool. And so I got on Blush and uh, Blush is dope. Yeah. Blush. So I just I've had success on Blush. Uh, and I went to that party. The hottest girls alive. Yeah. I left that party with so many numbers. All guys. It's cool. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Why am I? I'm better at flirting with men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's because I don't want to fuck them. Yeah. When it's off the table, it becomes it comes easy. Yeah, but you know? for some reason, the less you try to have sex with a girl, the more 
they want to. Dude, you're so right. I was just talking about this with my friend. It's like, I feel like it's a very boyish thing to like always want to fuck girls. And a few, maybe like two or three years ago, I really like turned a leaf where I was like, you know, maybe I don't have to try to get in these girls' pants. Like maybe I'll just be friends with them. Off and, the rip, at least. And what? Off the rip, like in the beginning stages. Like, <laughs> yeah. Try not to be yeah, hardening. Yeah, yeah, try yeah, not yeah. to be as hardening. Yeah, just like not go for that. And it honestly changed everything for me. I have all these girl, I have all these girlfriends now, and they come support me and come to my shows, and it's all cool and friendly. And I was like, oh, like I feel, I feel much more adult about it. You know Dude, what I mean? I'm, I say it all the time. I'm the same way because now I have a lot of hot girlfriends, and they view me as like a gay best friend or like an older brother, <laughs> a straight gay best friend, a straight gay best friend, <laughs> but. Deep down, I would maybe like to hook up with them or have a relationship with them, but I value sure. the friendship more. And if you're not as horny, usually they can potentially come to you, you know? What do you think about the whole prospect of like girls and guys can't really be friends? After hooking up? Or no, just like, 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 like just in general, like one of them is going to want something, something more. Uh, Always. Like my dad used to say this. I hear a lot of people say this. Yeah. And it's, that it's hard to be, have like a, like a, um, a non, what's the word? Um, platonic platonic relationship with the opposite sex if you're straight i think deep down there is always that kind of inkling or like uh kind of on desire it's the, it's that you want to yeah but you have self-control to not uh, pursue it mm -hmm. so i think you can be friends but deep deep down there may be something rooted in Maybe she'll suck my dick eventually. <laughs> <laughs> or like, yeah, well, well. I like going down, dude. I love going down on girls now. <laughs> no, you I didn't never always? Did. I never did. 16 to 26, I went on a dry spell because I got a little <laughs> illy willy Dude, my, taste. my friend was telling me the other day, it was so funny. My friend's hilarious. And he goes, um, he was hanging out with this girl and she's like, oh, like I'm on my period. And he was like, oh, well, my favorite color is red. <laughs> Isn't that so good, bro? That's hilarious, It's so bro. good, yeah. I'm, That's saying, disgusting. I'm, I'm, stealing, I'm stealing it. That, disgusting? Are you? Dude, who gives you, a you, fuck, You would go bro? down on a girl on her period? No, not go down. Don't be crazy. Uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh no, that's what he meant. No, he just meant like they were going to hook up, you know? It's, oh, yeah. I would fuck a girl on her period or have well, sex yeah, with her. Well, yeah. yeah. In yeah. the shower, though. Yeah, we're men. In the shower. <laughs> In the shower, right? Because like, yeah. it's going to look like a crime scene. <laughs> uh, all right, so... I want to get serious for a moment. You just came off tour, which is fucking amazing. Kid Baron, I want to know how the name came about, what got you into the music game, uh, and uh, how it was tour. Well, I've always loved music. Even when I was doing Thundermans and before Thundermans, I did YouTube, like before it was a thing to be a YouTuber. I did like covers and I did a couple of original songs when I was a kid. And then I got Thundermans and that all kind of went away and I really came out here to be an actor and that, that was my passion. That mm -hmm. is my passion still. And um, But once Thund Thundermans ended, I started writing music and it was like 2018, 2019. I was just dabbling, you know, writing songs, figuring it out, like figuring out how to do it. Nothing really that I felt really passionate about though. Like no, no song came about that I was like, oh, like I have to release this or something. It was just really doing it for the fun of it and for the love of it. Mm -hmm. um, telling Telling stories, figuring out how to do that, you know. And then um, I went through a really hard time and I feel like the best art comes out of heartbreak. It really does. I mean, there's a lot of good art that comes from from joyous moments too, but it's really the trenches that brings out the best in, in our uh, creative self, I feel. And so um, my parents split up and that was really hard for me. They're like my two best friends and uh, still going through all that four years later. It's, it's, it's hard. They got divorced four years ago? You, no, they got separated four years ago. Okay. Yeah, they're just separated. Okay. And so that was the time that I finally wrote something that really like I gave a damn about, you mm -hmm. know, and it changed everything for me. And it made me realize that there is so much power in art and there's so much power in storytelling and music. And you, you put your your trauma and your hard times into this thing, into this work. And like, it's so generous being an artist. And if you release things as an artist, because it's a hard thing that we do. But if you put it out, it's like it's like it's like a free gift to the world. And like it's saying like, hey, I don't I don't know you. I don't know what you're about. I don't know your your race, your sexual orientation, what you believe in. But hey, this is for you. It's it's really for me, but it can be for you, too. And if it helps you, great. If you just like it, it makes you feel good. Great. And if you don't like it, great. Yeah. Um. So. So anyway, in 2019, I wrote that song about about my my family situation and uh i was just i was just on fire for music what was it and called? it was called birds 
Okay. It was it was about kind of how the birds of prey really don't give you a say in, in anything going on. They kind of just decide how the chips fall for you, and there's nothing you can really do about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it meant a lot to me. And we played it in our set for a while, and um, it kind of got phased out. We never we never recorded it, um, but it was a big moment for me in in seeing that there is so much um, potential. Uh, in in telling your story through through music and that's what i continue to do you know i had a really rough falling out with one of my best friends the very next year and that was really hard for me it was one of my best best friends we used to live together we used to run together we used to do everything together when we were like 13 14 we crashed our cars into each other when we were like 15 16. oh there you go and um, yeah we just like we're the best friends and we so we had a falling out and i didn't really know why or what i did to deserve it and so i put that into a song it's called work it somehow and that was the first song we released as as kid baron mm -hmm. and uh and tristan my right hand man my guitar player my musical uh partner um, he's been in it with me since the beginning. We uh, we started Kid Baron, and it was a couple different bands over like 2020, 2021. We were called The Pulp for a while. The Pulp. The Pulp. Um, and then we found out there was like a very very famous English band called Pulp, and so we had to kind of uh, pivot from that. Then we went to the Beatles, but we realized like the it, Beatles there was like taken. this one little band. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we became the Pretty Grit for a while. I like that. Yeah, the Pretty Grit was fun. That was like a last of the year, year and a half maybe. And at this point, we were just just playing live, just playing little backyard like parties and stuff. Um, no like real gigs in LA. No real like recording yet. We were. I was just really figuring out how to play in a band. Never been in a band before, and it's different than just like playing with my guitar. You know, yeah. it's like you got to like find your your moments and your beats and like working with the other musicians and you know we were the pulp we had we were a six piece we had keys player we had a, a saxophone and congos player i think a saxophone changes the game that's oh. just a sexy right Dirt, dirty sa like dirty sax. It, that's a saxophone if you ask dirty me. sax is awesome right a lot of um, djs play it. i love that drop man i just want to take <laughs> yeah. my pants off yeah and um and then we, so we were the pretty grit for a while excuse me <clears throat> So we were the Pretty Grit for a while, and then I think it was like summer or fall of uh, 21, where we had a sort of like band member change again, and it just felt like a new slate. And I had had this sort of mantra or or um, idea of Kid Baron for, for a while. And, you know, it's spelled B-A-R-O-N. Mm -hmm. Like um, I a the sort merch. of- I love the merch. A sort of leader in a, in a community. Yeah. And I sort of just loved- the double meaning of barren, um, of people missing something like, like, like getting their heart ripped out. Yeah. And that's what my life had felt like for the past year or so. Um, but it's just playing on that, that double meaning of like, you can be a leader of this sort of broken generation. Um, and that's what it kind of means to me. And I just want to inspire people that this life is hard and people will let you down. And you're really the only person that you have that you can count on. Um, but it's not about what happens to you. It's about how you pick the pieces up and recover. And it's about how many how many punches you can take and, yeah. and keep going and kind of harness it into something positive in your life. So uh, you just got back off tour. What was your favorite city to perform in? Not that you have to have a favorite. but um, They were all great. You know, we lucked out on this tour. Um, I, I became friends with this kid, Evan. Uh, he goes by TX2. His band is TX2. And he is really, really cool, man. I found his music on Spotify. And that's what's so cool. I've just been really like manifesting stuff into my life. And I heard his music on Spotify and I was like, wow, like this kid's really doing something special. He's kind of creating a community. His sound is really good. And um, just reached out to him and we became friends. I went to one of his Viper Room shows and that's how it works. You just like show support, you know, you just show up for people and, yeah. that, and people just appreciate that so much. And he kind of lightly asked me in the summer if we were going to be available this fall for tour and we had never done a tour. And so I'm like, of course we are. And, you know, I'll check my schedule, you know, yeah, check and, the sketch. and, uh, and then it kind of went away for a while. And then back in like October, he asked me again if we were available to go out in November. And, uh, I was like, yeah, we're, we're still, we're still available, you know? And it happened so quickly, man. Like it was like four weeks later, we were in a minivan on the road driving around the whole country. Wow. Um, Detroit, 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 Detroit was I awesome. I always seen like Detroit's just a good place to perform a lot of like good rock city, baby. They, they love it. Oh, is that what it is? Detroit rock city. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, they just love music and we, it was our first stop too. Ironically, it was like the first one we drove three days out to Detroit to start the tour. 
and we get there the night before our first show. We went and saw the 1975. It was oh, on, it was wow. on Halloween too that show. Let's so go. Maddie Maddie Super Healy spooky. was Maddie Healy was in like a um like the uh, American Psycho clear coat with the axe like Christian Bale. Oh yeah, um, I love what, that fucking movie. I know it's the best movie. Um, but we had a great time, and so we get to the venue, and just this this crowd is insane. You know, it's probably f- like three four hundred, and uh, and they were just screaming before we even like you know picked up our instruments you know and, and it was really cool too because i'd never been on tour i'd only played little la gigs and you know a lot of people told me in the beginning when i started doing this music thing that i should just be jack griffo like why why are you doing this like you already have a name you already have this oh, whole why pull. be a band at all exactly you don't need them you know and i i knew that that they didn't get it you know that collaboration is really where the, all the magic happens and, I, and it felt very collaborative with me and tristan especially like you know after I wrote those few few songs, or I think I wrote like twenty songs over those two years in twenty eighteen and nineteen, and then I went through that thing with my with my family, and I went over to Tristan's house. I just called him. I was like, "Hey, I I, I need to write a song. Like, I, I feel inspired. Like, I need to like get this out." Yeah. And I went over, and he's such a talented guitar player, and it's a whole other story how I met him. I heard him playing guitar, and I was like, "I'm so moved." Mm-hmm. And I went over to his house and he just started this sort of like melody, you know, on the guitar. And it just transported me to another realm, really, where I could just think how I was feeling. And I feel like music is such an in the moment thing. Like it shouldn't be, it should be pretty easy, you yeah. know, when you're in that that flow state. And so basically when people told me like to not do the band thing, I was just like, fuck that. Like I, this is right. This yeah. is right for me because I, it isn't me. It's me and these other people yeah. and putting all of our stories together. Um, that's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of flow state, uh, have you heard of this little puppy? Because their whole mantra is flow state. I think it says it on the bottle. It's called Magic Mind, right? So it's basically it's nootropics, lion's mane. It, you drink it with your coffee in the morning. I stopped taking my Adderall. That's, okay. I used, I'm, I used to be prescribed it. Okay. I still am, but I don't take it. Yeah. Uh, and it boosts your energy, and it just gives you like a productive workflow and kind of like get you on top of your game. And it's like a shot. I take it every morning. I already took one, but I'll double dose. Let's you rip want, this bad rip boy. It? Yeah, it's dude. basically like legal mushrooms. And it's not bad tasting. Boost energy, crush procrastination. Oh, did you take your magic mind right? See, cat, cat's in on too. You hear about Dr. Death? No. Bro, there's this, uh, it, dude, it's going to be big. It's on. It's going to be a scripted series on Peacock now. Um, this podcast just blew up. And when we were on tour, my, um, my band made- Smoochie Town? Yeah, <laughs> with my bandmate Tristan, he's really into podcasts. He he produces podcasts, oh, yeah. um, and he wanted to play a podcast. And me and Preston, our drummer, we were kind of like, "Oh, let's let's not listen to a podcast. Like, oh, that's boring, you know, whatever." Mm-hmm. And he was like, "No, no, no, I got one for you. Like, you'll really like it. It's called Doctor Death." And this guy, this doctor, was straight up fucking people up from the inside. Like he would do surgery on people and like purposely like fuck their shit up and he would keep doing this and the and the hospitals didn't knew it was going on and didn't want to deal with the paperwork of getting his license taken away and they would just take him and, and send him to the next hospital to fuck up more people and he finally is in jail. It, what? It's wild, bro. He's like, he's mental. He's like American psycho. You know what I mean? But they didn't want the lawsuits so they just they didn't want to deal to keep doing with the it? headache of it's, it's apparently a lot of paperwork to like get someone's license taken away and they just didn't want to deal with it so the medical field who is supposed to be helping people just sent this guy on his way to the next town that's not why was he was just had a sick brain and wanted sick, to fuck sick up your guy. insides sick guy that's crazy Isn't, there's a new movie I actually saw it with Eddie Redmayne about a doctor that was like <laughs> purposely injecting insulin into like the bags of like fuck yeah, Eddie Redmayne is in it. Uh, no. You said love it? <laughs> I love, what a guy. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> wow, he's got little he's babies like, running no around everywhere. Fuck him? <laughs> <clears throat> wow that's nuts i saw this video the other day um of this guy and that he was about to meet his dad for the first time and it was like this whole they were documenting it you know and uh, it's public knowledge obviously i felt kind of weird bringing it up but no everyone knows um he's ready to meet his dad and it's it's super emotional and uh you know jared leto walks in and it's his, it's his dad. Jared Leto's the dad he, he, yeah he is he it was one of his children that he didn't know about 
for you know forever yeah isn't that crazy that'd be sick that'd be a good surprise. Jared Leto's your dad you know <laughs> let's go a fucking joker is yeah. my dad yeah yeah oh. I heard I heard Jared Leto's assistant uh flushes his poop for him <laughs> yeah yeah he like texts he like texts his assistant no way. yeah when he when he takes a shit and he's like flush no. yeah 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 who knows <laughs> it could be hearsay Time out. what so Jared Leto fucking takes a shit <laughs> yeah what <laughs> I mean, it's iconic. Looks at the handle, yeah, and then just doesn't. That's your problem. Now. Yeah, I know. Isn't that? No I mean, I can't. The guy gives no fucks. Yeah, I mean, if I had an assistant to flush my shit, like, why not? Right? Yeah, but you're not even fucking. You're not like pushing the shit down with your hand. Yeah, I mean, well, are you I'm a baby like, wipe guy? Uh, I do dude wipes. Do I? Do, yeah, I have dude, the minty yeah. fresh ones. Yeah, dude minty wipes. Are, dude wipes for the shit. They have to do because think about it, if you have shit in your arm. Right, you're not gonna just use toilet paper. You still have shit there. You're gonna get a little wet and wild. <laughs> exactly. Right? Are you a? Uh, um, I, I heard this theory the other day, and it shocked me that people, adults, do this. Someone asked me if I was a folder or a buncher. Of <laughs> what? Can you believe that? Like you fold, right? TP. My clothes. Your TP. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like is Wait, there who, any? Who like puts people, it on fucking dude, ball? Somebody bunches, bro. Like that. I think like, girls bunch. Girls bunch because you just have to wipe. Maybe the when piss. you pee, maybe when you pee, but when you take a shit, like you fold. Like, you have to fold. You fold. Like I go fucking triple ply, I, and I'm. It's like a book down there. I'm wiping. <laughs> with. I bunched when I was like a child. You know, like I didn't know how to fold. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Crazy. Isn't that crazy? I, you, do you use dude wipes, LJ? I, I well, a version of it, baby, baby wipes. Baby wipes. Oh, you want to hear a funny story? Hey, Ernesto, dude wipes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean on you. I'm not trying to have some right now. I'm not trying to shit right now. I have another uh, kind of funny Quick story. So the septic tank here, yeah. I was using dude wipes and fucking there was a stench outside and it, it got all backed up and in the front yard of here were all the fucking dude wipes I've been using. And I brought a girl over one time. This should be a fucking smooch of the week. I brought a girl over, came over and the Wi-Fi was fucking down, of course. And... She goes in the bathroom and the toilet started like building up and I thought she like put a tampon in there or something and Ugh. didn't tell me. I was like, hey, did you like flush something? She was like, no, I swear to God, I just flushed it. It did that on its own. I was like, okay, sure. And then we took a shower <laughs> later that night <laughs> uh, and then the shower wouldn't go down. So like, and then it just started overflowing my whole bathroom while she was over. And it was all because of the fucking dude wipe. So I guess some septic tanks can't fucking handle it. Wow. Um, you, I remind, another funny story about you were talking about a stench. I have a really funny stench story. It's it's actually traumatic. Ooh, so okay. FYF Fest, picture this. Um, What's FYF Fest? For the fuck Yeah Fest in LA and Exposition Park. Okay, cool. Um, great festival. Uh, Frank Ocean headlined 2016 when, when, when Blonde came out. It was amazing. Yeah. Missy Elliott, Nine Inch Nails. Amazing. Wow. Um, we might have been on some substances. Nice. Um, and I get home and it's just a stench in my apartment. Like it's like the worst stench I've ever smelled. And I'm inebriated, so I'm like, it's it's all it's all even crazier. You yeah. know, I'm like, oh my like my whole world is like caving in on itself. I'm like, what is happening in my house? Yeah. My roommate's in his room, asleep with a with a girl. And uh we're searching around the apartment and it smells like it smells like dead fish, like the worst honestly like the worst pussy you've ever smelled. Ew. Like really That's bad. why I didn't like, eat pussy for ten years. And it was it was terrible. It was really, really bad. And we're like looking around for it. We're like, where is it coming from? We like go to like the Rite Aid and like get some like air freshener. It was that bad. It just it was like like this girl must have, I don't know what she was doing. And it was um, the girl that was in so we, we, it smelled like pussy and we didn't know if it was. Yeah, we were just like so curious. Finally, like my friend Emery um, and my friend Angie were like in the living room and they're on the couch. And I just go, I hear Angie, she's like, Jack. And I'm like, Yeah, what's up? And this is my nice, like $8,000 couch. Like, like my, my baby, I still have it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and she's like, I found it. And it's like this spot on the couch and it's like this acid wash couch so we couldn't really see it but it's like this spot on the couch and it was just the rankest ever bro what so so bad they were they were messing around on the couch it was her angie no no <laughs> angie found it angie found it but my roommate was in his room with with a, with a girl oh, so we they, oh. so at that point we knew it was them so they were hooking up on the couch they were hooking up on the couch room exactly Oh, and, that's what that room smelled like. Oh my god! Well, I don't. They, I think they did all their business on the How couch. How does he so not it was smell it? 
I don't know, man. I think they were on like Kratom or something like that. Oh. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, that is in. It was insane. And so I knew it was him. So the morning comes around and he actually wasn't my like uh, my roommate roommate. Like my actual roommate was out of town and he was letting him stay there. So it was he like the, the, the audacity. Yeah. He, he was still my boy, but like he wasn't my roommate. He didn't pay rent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I just confronted him in the morning. I was like, dude, like, how could you do this? You know, <laughs> like yeah. without saying anything or trying to like, you know, make it better or anything. That's just like so disrespectful. Yeah. You know, I came home like with all my friends and the place like was like the rankest smell you've ever smelled in your own house. It's like so violating. Right. Yeah. And he denied it. He denied it till the cows came home. bro. he was like, it wasn't me. He was like, I'm like, dude, like who had sex on my couch? I'm then? like, dude, there's there's security downstairs. Like, no one got, got up here. Like, yeah. it's it's you. Like, it, I know it's you. And he's just, no, I can't believe you would you would think that I would do that. Yada yada. We're like screaming at each other now. And at this point, it's just like guys just like going at it. Yeah. And uh, and he felt so bad that he left. You know, he 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 bounced. And I didn't even kick him out. I was like, you're an asshole. Like, you know what I mean? You're yeah. you're not. You should just be honest. You know. Um, and we're, we're, we're actually, we didn't talk for like a couple of years, <laughs> I wouldn't fucking but we're talk okay now. We're okay now. Really? Yeah. I'll never Did forget Did he finally it. admit it? No, never admit it. Never admitted it. That's just yeah. stupid. When you know. know you got caught. Yeah. Just like admit it. Yeah. And then maybe. Some people are just liars, bro. I can't stand liars. Compulsive liars. I just can't have them in my life. Yeah. You know, the there's truth. No there's it. so, it, there's, it, the truth is so important. As much as it stings or it hurts, it's gonna, it's gonna save you time and, and heartbreak in the end. Besides lying, what do you think is like this generation's most kind of like, Com the biggest com issue? Comparison. The biggest issue. Social media. Comparison. We're the guinea pig generation for social media. You know, like we don't know the the. I mean, we know the research. I, I've heard a lot of government officials, you know, at the Senate or whatever, talking about you know the danger in kids and social media. And you know, these kids are really depressed. You know what I mean? Like about looking at people with different lives and wanting to change their own circumstances. And it's it's really hard because social media connects us in such an important way, but it also isolates us in the same way. Mm. Um, and nobody really knows the solution because TikTok's here and it's not going anywhere. You know, they talk about banning it, whatever. Um, just like the vapes, you know, we heard last year that they were going to ban them. And, and all the that, flavors and stuff too. That, but that didn't happen. No. You know, there's too much money. You always follow the money. I mean, it's all about greed. It's all about money, you know, and the people who have it are going to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Because like I, so do you think TikTok's bigger than Instagram? Is that the way oh, it's for going? Sure, for oh, sure. really? Yeah. And I don't really do TikTok. I feel like I was late to the game on TikTok in 2020. Uh, I was doing like, that was the year I was really like exploring music and everyone, the whole, the whole world shut down. And I, I just, you know, stayed home and started the band and stuff. And I didn't really get on TikTok. And uh, I have a little following on TikTok, whatever, but it's just so overwhelming. Like when I go on there and it's all new every time and like the creation features are all yeah. different and it's just so overwhelming. And so I try to do it every now and then, but you know, it's, it's, it's just such a shame that when you talk about acting and you talk about, it's such a pure art form and it's so hard um, that a lot of these people who come to LA now, you know, they have to have a following or they won't get cast in like the entry level of like the, of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and uh it just goes hand in hand now like i i, I never signed up to be an influencer or like cre i mean when you say creator like i want to create but like content content yeah. you know like short form like kind of it, it's not it's just not what what gets me up in the morning you know what i mean um like I just want to perform and act and, and do music, and I, I I try I find a way to do that on online. I, I do me little little you know songs. I saw and your stuff. fucking tro I chimed in with a heaven. Oh yeah yeah, dude, really good. You have a great voice. Thanks thanks dude. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Did a reverse cowgirl on the toilet to that video. <laughs> <laughs> the reverse cowgirl. Uh, That's dude, so I totally agree. I recently, but it's crazy how, like, if you get a DM request, if you get a follow, uh, or a comment from like that blue check mark from someone is my, I know people can buy it now. I just recently got it cause I was on the F boy Island show. It's crazy. Like there's a certain sense of validity of like, Oh, I'm going to click that profile. Cause maybe he's important. Maybe. And it, it is, I've gotten treated differently yeah. since I've gotten that little following. Mm -hmm. but, and that's not a huge following by any means, sure. but just that like little yeah. status quo. I was just talking about that with somebody. It's like, it really is like our value system these days of mm. like how many followers you have and uh, people treat you differently. And, and that's what's interesting about being a known person in, in any kind of regard. 
you'd never really know when you meet someone if they have any sort of preconceived notions about you. And you never really know if they're treating you the right way, you know? And it kind of puts celebrities in a very defense mode, if you know what I mean. Um, you don't think like you for you? Or exactly. Because what you know, you, yeah, they, they, people can act like, you know, they don't know you, but you never really know if you're known. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you can all you can do is just kind of live life with an open hand and, you know, try to be generous with your time. One of my only pet peeves about like fan interactions is when I'm eating. Like, if I'm eat, eating a meal and they come up to me, I'm always really nice. But I'm like, would you mind if like I just finished what I'm doing? And like after I'll, I'll definitely come take a picture. What with was you. your was your crazy uh, happens like uh, crazy fan experience? Yeah. What was your crazy thing? Um, I, I had this other story on my mind. I'll, I'll save it. Fan experience. Save it for what? I want to hear it. Uh, yeah, I don't have many fan experiences. And when they are crazy, I kind of blocked them out. Well, this one girl was kind of rude. I did this appearance in, uh, in Alabama or something when I was like 17. And uh, it wasn't crazy. It was just kind of like it sticks out to me. It made me think of it. She, um, she was just rude. She was like, you look taller on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and i was a kid you know i was like oh like Sick. I, thanks <laughs> you know like, thanks for watching the show um but you were talking about dms and, and stuff and I, I, this randomly this this um i was talking to this girl on instagram and uh she wasn't from here she's from like switzerland or something like that and i always dig like foreign girls like i think foreign girls are cool like something different and you know, something else so that's hard. not this you yeah. know it's intriguing to me and uh, we're talking about like family. I'm like, how many siblings do you have? Whatever. She's like, got older brother, you know, she's talking about her older brother and like, oh, that's, that's interesting. Like he's not here, huh? Like he's back in, in Europe. And she's like, yeah, I was like, you must miss him. Right. She's like, yeah, I missed my cutie. Wait, what? She said, yeah, I missed my cutie. My cutie, like her brother. And I, this is, that's what I said. I said, you, you have a cutie. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, like that's, that that's nice for you. You know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I was like, didn't text her anymore. It was kind of weird, right? I feel like if you refer to your older brother as like your cutie, like it might, it might be good intentions, but it just gave me like, yo, you could be vibes. like, I think in person's different. Like, I have a hot mom. Okay, but it's not like I call her my hottie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, like I have doing... a beautiful sister. Exactly, me too. My sister's beautiful, but like you don't talk, you don't talk about it. Like no, that, she's my know? little cutie. He's, yeah, I miss my cutie. She said. <laughs> I have another fucking story. Yeah. Really good. All right. um, I, another girl I was talking to, um, and I saw that she's a manager, a talent manager. And she was really hot. And I flirted with her right away, to called her babe, and like, you know, flirted with her and kind of gave her a little back and forth. And she flirted back, you know. And, that, and then I started talking about how she's a management. I asked how, she, how she's doing that and whatever. And, uh, and she talked about like, well, are you happy like with your management? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm happy with with my management. I got I'm not looking for a manager or anything. She's like, oh, okay, okay. And I said, I said also, you know, just out of like professionalism, like, you know, I think you know Which, we've we've already like yeah. showed some interest. Like that's probably uh, not we we probably shouldn't work together, you know. Yeah. And she was like, oh, like what do you mean? And I was like, just like our first few texts, like I, I clearly like showed interest in you, like you showed interest back. Like what do you mean? Yeah. She's like, oh, I thought it was just like a. Uh, uh, it was not, it seemed like a fine interaction to me. Like she's still like doubling down. Yeah. And I'm like, you didn't find any of our texts like flirtatious at all. Yeah. And she was like, no. And I just sent back like four red flags <laughs> 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 and didn't talk to her anymore. Dude, I hate when girls say like, it's not my fault. Like my politeness is gets missed as flirtatious as no bitch you're flirting <laughs> yeah. like there is a sense of like you can be polite and stuff and it comes off as that but some girls that are super hot they do it and they know what they're fucking doing mm -hmm. and they want to make you yeah. gaslight you into thinking that oh yeah. i'm not flirting with there's you. there's a fine line there's a fine line there was one girl um i won't i won't say her name but i really liked her and i just met her she knew a lot of the same people i knew really cute blonde uh, just rock it, dude. She was she was so hot, nice. and um, and we flirted a little bit, sending some like heart emojis, you know, oh, and like you nice. know kissy faces Eggplants. and whatever. Yeah. And then she like posts on her story about her boyfriend, and oh, I immediately call her out. I'm like, okay, like what's the yeah. deal? Like what's the deal? Like we did just start talking, but I'm like, I just call things how I see it. I'm like, you know, I'm like, do you think he would like like the way that you're talking to me? Mm. And she's like, I'm just being friendly. I hate that. I, I hate, hate that line. I you're just being it. friendly. No, you're you're be, being flirtatious. Yeah, you know, like 
You're Terrible. giving the wrong message mm -hmm. and you just aren't happy in your own You just like attention. And want more validation. You just like attention, you, you know? Do. Yeah. What's your ideal date spot? <sighs> um, Besides pins. <laughs> um, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty easy going. Like I'll, I'll do a dinner. I like a coffee, I like a good coffee date. You know, it's no pressure. I've been doing that more. I've been going to run in more on dates. One, okay. because you get to pop the tarp off. <laughs> show the merch. Uh, but two, you actually like you're forced to have conversation and the one is way cheaper. Yeah. You're only spending a couple True. dollars on fucking water bottles at True. the bottom. Yeah. And that's an honor system. So sometimes I don't care. <laughs> 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 but I, uh yeah, and it's just way cheaper and it's there's no like kinda like I would take girls to Applebee's. That's my favorite fucking restaurant. That's so funny. Dude. And like girls out here, some like to be wine and dined, which yes. I used to do that. Like when I first started this podcast, I'd be going to Soho House like every uh -huh. fucking week. Uh -huh. And but you're setting precedent <laughs> for these dates of like this is where we want to go every week. Really yeah. expensive dinners, but like yeah. a girl shouldn't like you for that experience. Yeah, you know. How, how old are you? Twenty eight. Do you usually date up or down or same age? My ex-girlfriend, she's low 30s. I tend to get along with girls in their like low to mid 30s. That's cool. Because I think younger girls, they just want the life to be given to them. They want like LA's made for older guys and younger girls. Sure. Because we're naive to think with this like fucking rocket smoke show that's fucking posting pictures of her ass and tits on Instagram, she's gonna get fucking DMs from athletes, stars, and this and that. And if Leo is fucking DMing her, obviously she's gonna fucking answer, why would she go on a date with me? Yeah. So like why waste your time and money with these younger girls? Because at the end of the day, they do just want a fuck boy. <laughs> Yeah. Because the less you care, the more... I, like, I care, bro. I literally care <laughs> too fucking much. I care too much with these girls. So once you stop caring, they just flock to you. Are you a... Are you, you're obviously a nice guy. You're not a fuck I'm boy. a nice guy. Um, but I, I was thinking about the whole age thing. And recently, I've found that... I, I always would date a couple years younger than me. Like my first girlfriend, my even my second girlfriend, always like two years younger. That's just the way it worked out. And um, But now, um, I just turned 27. And I can't do it anymore. I can't do it now. Like if they're more than two years younger than me, like I just don't give it any serious attention. And I, you know, I'm kind of dating to like find my person now. You know mm. what I mean? I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. And I'm finding, I was just talking about this with my friend and I was talking about it with actually the girl that I went out with at uh, Pins last night and she's 25. So she's like my age. And I do say younger, but I think the, I think the metric is any more than two years younger is, is just too young because what I'm trying to say is I feel like, when I'm talking to girls, I like to, like you said, like I said, take them to coffee, have a good conversation, see what they're about. And with when there's a certain amount younger, I think like less than maybe like 24, they feel like, like I, I like to have like silence. Like I think silence is golden and you have to see what kind of comes up, you know what I mean? In the silence. And a lot of these younger girls, they won't let that happen. They need to fill it. They need to fill it with some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you saying right now? You know, yeah. like, let's just not talk until something worth talking about comes up. And that's when you really know, like even with your boys, like if you're in a car alone with you and your boy or just watching TV and it doesn't feel awkward or just chilling, listening to music, doesn't, the silence doesn't need to be filled. That's when you know it's like, you're, vi you're comfortable. You're with just each with other. each other. Yeah. It's a human experience. Exactly. You know, you don't have to fill the space with bullshit, which I hate. You exactly. Know? So yeah. that's a good date idea. Road trip with a girl and see if she fills the silence. Mm. Yeah. Know? If a, Yeah. If they can't do silence, it's not for me. It's not for me. Yeah. Especially because a lot of the girls need to see it. Shut up. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we uh, took too much of your time, before we go, what's your dream role acting wise? Um... You know, I'm in a great acting class right now. I I've done a lot of class over the past 10 years and I mean, this one that's just working for me better than anything else. I think we were in the same one. Anthony's? Anthony Mido. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's great. Yeah, yeah. We are talked you, about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you in Tony's class? So he doesn't do on, ongoing classes anymore. I did his workshop in December. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I'll do workshops when, when, he, when he's in town and, and does them. Um, but I'm in uh, their master class Wednesday night. And I just love it. Like everyone around me is so good. And I'm getting really into it. And I just go so happy every Wednesday to like learn. And I'm getting a lot past a lot of my you know, Nickelodeon overacting tendencies, which is not saying anything negative. Like there's a total, yeah. total space for that. But, you know, I want a, a long career. You know, I want to be able to to bear my soul for people. And it's hard when you've like kind of created this this outer shell and this exterior of like this clean cut kid. And Max Thunderman is very like, you know, we had some real moments on the show, but 
when you play that character for so long, 10 plus years, it really bleeds into like who you are as a person. Like Max and Jack just became the same person because we are. But it's not really like I'm, I'm not really like that. Like I have like, you know, like we talked about, like experimented with drugs. I have like, you know, um, you know, done things that like Max wouldn't do. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not me. It's Jack is different than Max. And so I'm kind of really going in like, who am I? And that's what's so cool about Anthony's Anthony's school and his technique is very, it's very personal. It's very like what happened when you were a kid that like made you this way? And uh, in class, I'll get to the question about the roles, but in class recently, um, I couldn't get jealous in a scene. I couldn't get jealous of my wife. Like my wife was like, you know, talking to somebody else and like I couldn't get there to that place of like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? You're, you're my woman. And we had to like really deep dive with my with my teacher in front of everybody, you know? And she's like, why? Like why? And I, we were going through it and I was like, well, you know, my second girlfriend, she, she always talked to other guys like around me and I was just conditioned to not have any feelings about that. And it was really deep. And I had to like write her a letter that I didn't even send her and, and, and say that, you know, this experience with you made me this way and I need to turn from this. And because I was in my right mind to feel a certain way if my girl yeah. was talking to another guy, being flirtatious with another guy. But I was conditioned to not feel those feelings. And so in my life and in my work, I couldn't I couldn't get to that place. Ooh. And so it's all about realizing these things so you can you can change. You know what I mean? Um but uh, dream roles, I mean, you know, I just want to do good work that I'm proud of. I want to keep growing. And I feel like I've been growing so much this year. Um, I did an indie film uh, in the summer that was like about a bear attack. It was definitely like, the most dramatic thing I've ever done. Was this one creatively shot? Creatively shot? Yeah, it was like an iPhone or something? No, that's the stay at home. So stay at home, stay at home was the, an indie I did right after that, um, which is, it, it's called Screen Life. They do like security cameras and Zoom calls and stuff like that. I've done a couple of those over the pandemic. Sick. But this was a real, more, more real uh, deal movie. And, um, and I was so happy to get that role. And it was really affirming me going in class the past 10 months that it's working, that I'm, I'm booking, you know, yeah. again. Through the, through the strike, too. We got like an in-term agreement and be able, be able to shoot, you know. But um, did I love sitcom? You know, I'll totally do another sitcom. Like, I, it's just so fun. Um, I, I know the process. I, I, I know how it goes and, and what it takes to great kind of work schedule have too. those beats. It's a great work schedule. You have your nights, you have your weekends. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I, I would love to do like a, a euphoria, like a really serious, mm. serious series, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever comes up, man, like it's, it, it's so interesting, like, you know, getting the roles and you see it and you break and you break down your email and you're like, all right, like how, how am I going to fit in this? Is this going to be pretty an easy fit or is this going to be something I really have to think about? Is this someone that I'm not really like, you know, how can I find myself in this yeah. role? Um, you know, I want to yeah. work with Leo, you know? Yeah. Would you yeah. ever go on Fuckboy Island? Um, depends on the money. Hey, hello, all right. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming on. Where can we find you on socials? And if you want to plug anything, new Thunderman's movie coming out. New Thunderman's movie coming out. I'm playing the Roxy for all you guys in LA with my band Kid Bear on January 13th. Oh, um, baby, I'm there. Yeah, dude, it's gonna I'm be it's gonna be awesome. There. Yeah, we're headlining the Roxy. It's exciting. Let's go. Yeah. So Jack Griffo, Kid Bear, and music. Appreciate you, dude. Let's yeah. go, my guy. Another episode of Smoochy Town. I'm gonna go reverse cowgirl the toilet. Thanks, Jackie. <laughs> I've been on the road. I've been doing shows. Now we ain't stacking. Remember sleeping on the floor. Still at the gas station when the town's cold. In the kitchen, hostel trying to flip it out the stove. Rocking fake.